Hello everyone and welcome to Reentry. In this video, I'm going to walk you through how to enable VR in Reentry, how to set it up and uh, make it uh, work uh, with Mercury, Gemini and Apollo. And uh, then lastly, I'm going to jump into some of the performance techniques and graphic settings that you can use to optimize rendering, uh, because uh, unlike uh, Mercury and Gemini, which is already hard on rendering, CS, uh, the Apollo CSM and the Lunar Module is a different beast, and uh, the CSM alone uh, is a magnitude more complex to render than the Mercury and Gemini combined. Uh, the Lunar Module is a little bit easier to render than the CSM, so if you can get optimal uh, frame rates on the CSM, you should be go, uh, good to go on the rest of the VR modules that are currently available in re-entry. So, the first thing that you will need to do is to, of course, connect your HMD and uh, set up your motion controllers. Uh, once that's done, you can go into settings and you can uh, scroll down into the virtual reality experimental uh, category. The reason why it says experimental here is that VR is uh, not yet uh, a big focus when it comes to re-entry. Uh, because uh, right now I need to complete kind of the core of the game first. Uh, once the core of the game is complete and some polish has been done, uh, VR will be uh, in focus and uh, you will see quite a lot of redesigns and things going on. Uh, uh, an important thing to remember is that uh, in this preliminary support, all your suggestions, feedback, uh, learning from other games that you might see fit for re-entry, uh, uh, can be suggested to me as I uh, develop the different aspects of VR. So once I'm uh, going into then redesigning user interfaces, uh, panel interactions, or even adding functionalities, uh, I will keep your suggestions in the back of my head as well as on my to-do list. So please uh, provide me with suggestions. A lot of you have already done it. And in this update, you will see quite a lot of them already applied. So there's a couple of things here. Uh, the first one is enable VR. This one will send a message to Steam uh, saying that, okay, uh, enable VR for re-entry. Uh, the other one is enable VR control evaporation during burns. Uh, this is just something I'm testing out. It was a suggestion uh, on the re-entry Discord channel. Uh, this basically means that in Apollo, if the SPS uh, or any of the ascent engine stages or the lunar module engines are burning, uh, your controllers will vibrate. It's a good feedback if you don't have sound or if you want to have both. Uh, the last one is also a very new feature that I've been working on for the last couple of weeks, which is the ability to use a gaze cursor instead of motion controllers. Uh, this is also a, a request by some of you in the community uh, who doesn't have the motion controllers or are using some other kind of VR libraries to render uh, re-entry in. Uh, that doesn't support the controllers. Uh, using this one, I'm basically moving the laser pointer from the motion controllers into kind of uh, uh, the headset. And then you can move around uh, using the, uh, the mouse cursor to target uh, different switches uh, and, and stuff like that. So you will move your head as well as your mouse as a cursor. Uh, so the first thing that you will need to do is to enable VR. And I recommend you to have Steam VR closed uh, when you do this, uh, because I don't know why, but there's some instability when it comes to Steam VR and VR implementations at time uh, that uh, might make it crash. I haven't seen those lately. It was uh, a couple of versions ago, but I've been trying to keep it up to date. But if I now hit enable VR, you will kind of get this same uh, warning. This game has detected that you wish to enable VR. The preliminary support for virtual is leveraging the Steam VR SDK. Due to the experimental state of VR implementation, you will need to allow the simulator to enter VR mode. Uh, if you have it enabled, and every time you start re-entry, it will uh, ask you if it's allowed to uh, enable VR. This means that if there's something that crashes because of VR being enabled for some strange reason, 
then uh, you can just hit deny and it will deny the initialization of VR. This is just a, a security test basically. Uh, in an earlier version, people were uh, unable to play the game because they enabled VR and then every time the computer tried to initialize VR, it crashed. Uh, but this is um, now fixed with this uh, pop-up as well as a lot of improvements on the stability. But I'm still keeping this here just in case. Uh, I'm going to hit confirm. Then you will see uh, Steam VR uh, working its magic uh, launching. And if I look inside of the headset, I might be able to see a lunar landscape, uh, which is a good indication that everything is now working in VR. So the second thing that you will need to do is to set up uh, the controllers. I've uh, provided a screenshot of uh, how you should set it up if it's not already bound by default. Uh, I'm going to add, of course, more de uh, default bindings for different types of controllers. But right now, just jump into Steam settings to do this. So if I remember correctly, I'll go into Steam VR and uh, settings. And then you can go into controllers and you can show bindings, uh, manage controller bindings, stuff like that. I'm going to go in and say manage uh, and uh, you can see re-entry here i think that this is uh, there we go and then just see if i can get this in full screen for the video as well yeah this one is uh, the old binding ui and uh, i can see that the current controller is the oculus touch and the current binding is as you can see here. So you would uh, want to bind this trigger as the interaction. This is uh, how you interact with stuff in game. Uh, if you're highlighting a switch, uh, this is what you use. If you want to rotate a selector, uh, it's the interaction. And uh, there's an interaction for both left and right hand controllers, so you can use both hands to interact with the panels. Uh, the joystick button on the left stick is used to toggle the UI and also you can uh, uh, bind the left thumb stick as in the axis uh, to do different actions in the game uh, such as moving the camera uh, between different uh, points. Uh, same applies for the other side. Uh, the right trigger button is used to toggle the laser pointer and then uh, the right thumb stick is used to press roger or deny on the, the mission commands that you see in academies and stuff like that. Uh, the next thing is uh, trigger. Uh, this is the squeeze. Uh, and uh, it's used to, um, let me just double check. It's used to grab stuff uh, such as uh, the mission pad, uh, the uh, TC50, a media player or recorder, audio recorder, and then uh, the different joysticks to be able to uh, maneuver in space. Uh, it will then act as a joystick if you grab, for example, the joystick in the game. Uh, same applies for the right controller. Uh, then uh, you have a button to uh, snap the mission pad, the VR mission pad, into the controller and it will then follow it and if you press it again it will release the mission pad uh, where you uh, press the button and then you have uh, y which is used to reset the view so usually um, in apollo uh, it should be simple to reset the view and especially in uh, a space simulator where there's a large cockpit and you would like to fine-tune your camera position uh, you can use this one often to snap into, into position uh, the A and B button on the other side is used to um, uh, move switches using the laser pointer. So you can push a switch up or down uh, using A and B uh, or rotate uh, selectors, move fuses and stuff like that. And then you will might want to en enable haptics if you want the motion controllers to vibrate. And then you have the action poses. Uh, which is also quite Im important. Set the left hand row and the right hand row to the poses so uh, they're actually tracking the
the motion controllers. And that's it for the input bindings. Uh, there's also a couple of uh, um, important things there to read through, so I suggest you uh, to go through this if this is the first time you're trying v uh, VR for re-entry. Um, the next thing uh, you want to jump in and do is to go to settings and uh, configure and set the graphic settings to minimum. This is um, uh, probably a good starting point for VR. Uh, you might want to have some multi-sampling and now that the resolution, for example, in my Quest 2 headset is quite high, you can actually see the anti-aliasing, uh, but you can also turn it off uh, for performance boost. Uh, shadow should be set to low. Minimum has actually shadow set to off, so it doesn't really matter what you do here. Uh, shadows will just be um, fully removed. Texture quality can be set to whatever you want. I recommend full resh no matter what, because you need uh, some resolution to see the panel text and stuff like that. And I disabled and set the filtering uh, level for the anisotropic filtering uh, to basically disabled. Uh, the other thing you want to make sure is that reflection probes is set to off, post-processing is off, uh, same with the screen space ambient occlusion pro post-processing and things like that. Uh, when it comes to the crew models, this is up to you. Uh, another very important thing is to set the earth textures to low because uh, the uh, high earth uh, is uh, 64k in resolution, uh, which is a lot of texture data. And there's 64k in resolution for both uh, the color maps, uh, the normal maps, the height maps, uh, the cloud maps and stuff like that. But you can uh, use the experimental 3D clouds if you wish to. Uh, you can try it on and off if you want, but I, I don't think it's too much of a difference to use this or not. Okay. Once you've set this up, uh, you can start playing the game. You can test if things work, if it's uh, rendering okay. If not, you can tweak uh, more. If it's rendering too well, you might want to improve a little bit on the visual aspects. Go back and forth. Uh, another thing that I've added here is a VR option. So if you pull this one all the way to the left, you can enable VR. Uh, this VR render settings does support shadows. So it's a step up from minimum and uh, it does support a couple of uh, lights as well. So you will be able, I think it's four lights. So you will be able to actually see uh, lights, uh, cabin lights and stuff like that render uh, correctly in the game. Uh, of course, you can pull this up all the way up if you have uh, very good hardware and uh, if you don't care too much about uh, rendering. Uh, I'm going to leave this in VR for now, and then I'm going to head back, back, and then I'm going to load up uh, a mission. It could be any mission, uh, Mercury, Gemini, and Apollo. I'm going to do Apollo for now, and I'm going to jump into lunar orbit on the power descent and lunar landing mission, and then I'm going to hit launch. Loading uh, VR uh, might take a little bit more time. Uh, and I might even sometimes just restart the entire game and quit Steam VR and let everything reinitialize between missions uh, to get the optimal uh, performance from kind of a scratch uh, instance of Steam VR. Uh, this helps, and sometimes it does not. Okay, so once you've loaded up into the command service module, uh, you will see the loading panel inside of uh, the headset. Uh, this is, of course, something that I will uh, change a little bit. It will show you some tips and set up instructions and stuff like that. Uh, but for now, it's just a good indicator that, uh, you know, the the panels are still loading and it's kind of the same functionality as the pa loading panel state text that you used to. Uh, the first thing that you'll see is that uh, the um, resolution is very low. Uh, this is based on Steam and it might look a little bit different in your headset. So 
if you now go into Steam VR, and I bring up kind of the Steam VR settings, and then on graphics, you can change the resolution per eye, and I set it to 20%. Uh, if I now move this up to 100%, you will see that uh, you have a pretty good uh, resolution of the panels and you can actually read the text uh, in the Quest 2 headset at least uh, on the different panels. Uh, but this is all depending on your hardware. So you can pull it up to 150 if you have a very good graphics card uh, that can render the Apollo CSM in VR. Uh, in Mercury and Gemini you will be able to easily pull it up uh, compared to the CSM and the Lunar module of course. Uh, but keep the screen up and uh, uh, play around with this and see what you, what's your optimal settings. There's a couple of other things that you can do on the SteamVR settings as well, um, uh, if you want to. So, if I now minimize this again and uh, I go back into the capsule, uh, if you see that the graphics are suddenly starting to be a little bit slow and the headset isn't able to kind of catch up with the rendering for some reason, you could try and hit escape to open up the menu, uh, go into graphics, and then you can drag the quality level to minimum and uh, you can see uh, it being applied and then you can revert it back to VR again. Uh, sometimes this helps uh, if you see some lagging or some weird stuttering that you're, not, that you're not used to seeing, then pull the graphics to minimum and then revert it back to VR to see if it kind of lets it, it catch up and, and start rendering normally. Uh, you can also tweak the graphic settings in the game as well. Uh, so go ahead and just play with the, these things until it renders correctly. Uh, when everything is set up, grab your controllers, try things out and start playing the game. You can see that currently the rendering is quite okay on my headset, but it's still far from optimal. And this is running the VR setup in the CSM, uh, which means that it does have shadows enabled and it provides support for up to four pixel lights. So if I, for example, go into the integral light here, you will be able to, oh, wait, uh, Okay, of course, I'm in, in menu. I don't see this menu in VR, so if I hit back here. Resume session. There we go. So, as I said, go back into the capsule, see if it renders uh, better. As you can see, I'm getting quite okay frame rates, especially considering that I'm recording it uh, as well. So. You can go and test if you can interact with the panels, see how it feels. And if you need to improve performance, uh, go ahead and turn down some graphics. Or if you want to have better graphics, go ahead and turn them up. Play around and see how it works and find your optimal setup. But please remember that, of course, since Mercury is very simple to render compared to Gemini, which is also quite simple to, com uh, to render compared to the CSM, uh, those will, of course, need uh, some different tweaking uh, based on what you're trying to render. Right, with that, thank you uh, for watching this video. And please let me know if you have any questions uh, or if you want to see another video of something VR related. Thanks again.